Hey, hey, it's Terry Bain. We're back with another fun episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're joined by Derek Gallimore of Outsource Accelerator. We're going to talk about outsourcing in the Philippines. But before we introduce Derek, let's say hello to my good pal, longtime friend, the lovely, the talented, the one and only Facebook maven, Janet E. Johnson. How are you, Janet? Good. Where's the E? What's the E stand for today? <laughs> it's going to stand for everything because that's about all I can think of right now is everything. Could stand for entertainment because of the oh. meeting that I had last night. Maybe. Oh, okay. Good. I like that. Entertainment. Okay. We always have an E. So I'm like, wait, he skipped the E. Yeah, <laughs> Where's the E? <laughs> Maybe you're, we are out of practice. Holy cow. It's been a month. <laughs> yeah, we haven't actually done the uh, podcast interview. We, we batched so so many at once that we did like, I don't know, eight in a row and we were so ahead that we kind of took our summer off. So Derek, welcome. You are the first one we've interviewed here for, for about two months actually. So yeah, we're out of practice a little bit. So bear with us, bear with us. Wow. That's fantastic. I'm excited to, uh, to be your first after yeah. a little break. You know, we get, you know, summer's tough. Summer's tough. When you, I live in Minnesota, Terry's in uh, Michigan. So we only get this much summer. <laughs> So right. we have to take advantage of it. Yeah. You should. Yeah. Well, book. awesome. Well, welcome, Derek. I appreciate you coming on. I, um, I love this topic. It's such a topic for me, um, outsourcing the Philippines, because I have, uh, like I mentioned to you, I've been doing this for some time. My virtual assistant, my graphic designer, both in the Philippines. So I'm looking forward to talking about this. Let yeah, me. absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me. Super excited to talk about yeah, this. Yeah, I am too, definitely. Let me give you a proper intro and then I'm going to let you take it. Let's so Derek, it. you are a serial entrepreneur who has experienced the fullest highs and lows of entrepreneurial roller coaster. Yeah, Terry and I are with you. He has built multi-million dollar property portfolios, has bootstrapped a $20 million business and seen it all come tumbling down only to rebuild it again. Derek has lived and worked in five countries and traveled through dozens more. He has embodied remote online and international work since 2008, well before the phrases were even coined. Derek has been outsourcing in the Philippines since 2011 and believes that outsourcing is one of the most potent and transformative business tools available to date. As a result, he founded Outsource Accelerator, which is the Alibaba of outsourcing provides the gateway for businesses to connect with outsourcing suppliers. Like once again, welcome Derek. I'm super excited to talk about this topic. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Janet. And thank you, Terry as well for uh, inviting me and, and just, I get really excited about this topic. So uh, yeah, where would you like to start? Well, how did you get into doing that in the first place? How did you go, oh, outsourcing in the Philippines? Yeah, well, I mean, one of my previous businesses was hospitality based in central London. And it occurred to me quite early on that we needed 24 uh, seven customer support, sales support, and it just, you know, very clearly wasn't available in London. It's too expensive. No one wants to work 24 hours anymore or overnight. Um, so a business friend of mine suggested I went to the Philippines and not physically, but just looked for staffing in the Philippines. Uh, and very quickly, I, I realized that this was a good source for uh, staffing. Um, I got my first staff member there within sort of maybe a month or six weeks of looking. Uh, that was in 2011. And between then and about 2016, I built the Manila office um, up to about 70 or 80 people then to, to basically run the back end. But then it um, it worked up the value ladder and we did everything there from marketing to sales to management to HR, uh, business strategy. Um, you know, it really climbed the value ladder and we basically then ran eventually our London company, uh, mostly from Manila, Philippines. That was the start. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. Hmm. So you ended up, um, so how does your company work? I mean, I'm curious on that because um, like I said, I've done found Philippines and I recommend how to find Philippines, but there's a two, two questions with this. And then I have found some Philippine workers can be just tremendous and mm. others, like I've had some ones that have worked for me for over a year and they just disappear off the face of the earth. 
Yeah. So yeah, you've yeah. probably heard of that. So if you want to touch on those points too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, so just to, I suppose, um, clarify that was my previous business. Now my business that I'm, I'm doing is, is outsource accelerator. And that is basically helping people such as yourselves uh, navigate the outsourcing market and all of the, the, op, the outsourcing. There's a lot of different flavors out there, a lot of different types of outsourcing. So we help you navigate that. Um, yeah, look, the way I mm-hmm. like people to think about outsourcing is really just the same as employment um, and there's a lot of different types of employment there are you know there's project work there's full-time employment there's part-time employment there's contract work and really it's no different with outsourcing it is really just um, offshore employment so a lot of the sort of fundamentals that you find in general employment can also apply to um, to up op- to offshoring or outshore outsourcing you know and um, so Unfortunately, there are some bad eggs in terms of, uh, you know, potential candidates or employees that you get, um, but that is the same all over the world. And, um, sure. you know, you sure. just have to be careful with the processes. Um, and it is slightly heightened because of the fact that you're in different countries, um, but that's also why we are here and, you know, the outsourcing suppliers to help uh, smooth the ride for you a little bit. Got it. Got it. So do you do, so with your outsourcing, do people work through you or do you help them line up with somebody and then they go on their own or is it through you? How does that yeah, work? so we are like uh, staff augmentation where we um, formally employ the candidate on your behalf. So they're within wow. a sort of proper legal entity in the Philippines. Um, they are fully compliant, all the government taxes. Uh, their health insurance is all paid for. They go to work in an A-grade office. They have colleagues. Um, so, you know, we very much normalize the kind of employment and the work environment so that all they need to do is just concentrate on your deliverables and your task for your organization. Everything else is taken care of, um, you know, right from, of course, the HR recruitment, employment, um, all of the hardware, internet, the the safe and uh, friendly and enjoyable work environment with colleagues. Uh, And then so it's just down to business in terms of uh, their relationship with you and kind of building the processes for your particular organizational needs. So you vetted them already. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we do like, uh, like first round, we obviously source candidates according to your job description, your requirements. Um, and then we uh, source them. We do first round uh, vetting and we can do references, of course. And then we can introduce them to you, a short list. You can then do uh, obviously interviews. You can give them tests. Uh, and then, you know, you, you onboard the candidates that are, that are suitable for you. So then do you already have like a specific bench full of professionals or do you go out and find them per project or is it a combination? It's a combination. Yeah. Generally, you know, if, if suppliers have a lot of people on the bench, you, you have to sort of ask why and where they've come from. Um, it often is best if people are sourcing specifically for your needs, according to your job description. Um, but you know, if it's, if it's a more common role such as customer service or, content or creative, then they're probably going to be faster turnover and, you know, we're going to have some on hand. Whereas if it's something a little bit more unique, um, like a a certain profession um, or, you know, a lot of years of experience, then you really have to go out to the market for that. And that then just takes a few weeks like it would in any normal recruitment process. Hmm. Interesting. So what is the average cost per what, what would like, for instance, I have a VA. Um, mm. So a virtual assistant and uh, we get help with our podcast, of course. So we do the podcast, we can send it there. Uh, she's been with me three, four years. She's going to be listening to this because <laughs> right. so, Joanne. so you better have that right. Yeah. You better act like, you know, <laughs> I know it's terrible. Yeah. I just, I lose the years, you know, but anyway, um, and so she's working with me. So somebody like that, 
mm. you know, what kind of, or, or, or even graphic design or web development. I mean, just a range of what, what, because you said you're saving obviously from the U.S., what you yeah, doing. yeah, absolutely. Look, and this is obviously one of the key motivators um, is, you know, you're saving pretty serious money here. Um, but as well, it's the availability. There's um, 110 million people in the Philippines. There's about 650,000 graduates every year. Um, and there's just an incredible, highly qualified and very eager, very loyal workforce here. Yep, um, yep. But generally, we suggest you can save about 70% um, all in. So, you know, there's wow. obviously in the U S you have a salary, then you have all the government contributions and then you have the office costs and all of the sort of add on costs. When you compare like for like, um, it would be 70% savings generally. So it's really, really significant. Um, you know, if you want to put a few figures to it, base salaries. So if you're just looking at the base salary, it would be somewhere between about 500 US per month, up to about a thousand US per month. Um, pretty much for, you know, these are college graduates, um, you know, the 500 a month would be kind of two to three years post grad, and then up to a $1,000 a month, you would start to get senior management, you would start to get, um, you know, professional um, like accountants and um, like mid-level accountants for that, web designers. So, you know, the, you get a really good range between about $500 and $1,000 a month. Now, that's the base salary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there are the facility costs on top and, of course, the employment okay. and government contributions, which can often add up to about another five or $600 per month. But it's still, you know, an incredible... Uh, opportunity for for both sides, you know, everyone in the US and, and Philippines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, um, when I recommend people, so that's the cool thing is like, I, I get asked, like I said, all the time. Mm. But then a lot of people, what happens is they use some people and they figure it out, but it doesn't work for them. So mm. I think I really like how it's vetted with you. You know what I mean? Like you're in control of them. You're the third party that helps. You're there, which helps, you know, they're in your office. So I think that makes a big difference um, and definitely would help for sure. For sure. Yeah. It, it, it's, it can sometimes be, you know, for the smaller businesses, a big leap, but getting someone full time and dedicated and also getting someone that comes into an office. So it's, uh, you know, obviously, it's professionalized and they have a routine. Um, it just kind of, uh, you know, ensures success really um, mm -hmm. versus, you know, a lot of people start out on Upwork or freelancer or online jobs pH. And you can sometimes, it can just be a little bit disappointing. And then people are a little bit tainted by it and they say yes. the whole thing doesn't work. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, it can be two steps forward and then two steps backwards. And um, we can really uh, sidestep all of that. You get one or two, you know, successful uh, onboardings, and then there's no stopping our clients. You know, very, very soon people are building up to 10 or 20 or 30 staff um, because they just can't believe the incredible quality and, and opportunities in, uh, in outsourcing in the Philippines. Yeah. I got I got absolutely down a rabbit hole while we were, you were talking. Um, I when you said 110 million people, I was like, wow! I always thought the Philippines was kind of small in terms of geographical size, right? So now all of a sudden I'm like, all right, well, how big is it? Well, it's 300,000 square kilometers. Okay, so the United States is over nine million, right? So right. one third the amount of people in a size that's half the size of Texas. Texas right. is 600,000 square kilometers. It's like, wow, no wonder there's a, there's a tremendous density of folks there. Right? Is every, I look, I can see through the window behind you. There's obviously some high rises yeah. is Manila just kind of stacked on top of each other. What's yeah, Manila, it? It, it's one of the biggest cities in the world. Now I think it's sort of, you know, 22 to 25 million. I don't think they really know how many people live here. Um, wow. And it is one of the most dense, uh, highly populated cities in the world. Um, you know, so, uh, but it is, you know, the, the country is very 
disparate in that uh, Manila is very dense, a lot of you know, 70, 80 story buildings um, and very sophisticated as well. But then they also have about 7,100 islands, um, many of which are, are you know, just incredible um, deserted islands, white beaches, stunning, stunning uh, scenery. Um, and you know, then that is very remote and just what you would imagine of uh, sort of a tropical paradise, really. So, yeah, there's there's many sides to the Philippines. That's crazy. Awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. It makes it easier to live there, I would imagine, when you can <laughs> hop on a boat and be at a d deserted <laughs> island within 45 minutes or so. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's never cold. You never need more than a, a T-shirt, which also helps. <laughs> I just wow. I, I saw it was 81 degrees. It's you know 9:50 p.m. It's so it's 81 at almost 10 o'clock. So <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's pretty much 81, like whether it's midday, midnight, or 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy all year round. It's just uh, and I suppose no humidity either. Just my guess. Yeah, well, actually, it can be. Yeah, that's do they the, have humidity? The, okay, that's the killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. uh, that's why you need to get to the beaches so you can cool off. The girl that works for me, Joanne. Hi, Joanne again. Hi, Joanne. She loves snow. Her biggest dream in life is to touch snow. I'm like, I wonder if there's a company that can mail her snow because <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> we should send her snow as a thank you gift. How do you do Act that? surprise, Joanne, when you get it. Act surprise. <laughs> exactly. We have plenty. <laughs> I think it's so odd though, because I like snow. Growing up with snow, I've had snow my whole life. But you know, I suppose if somebody's never seen snow, you know, that's kind of yeah, different. Yeah. 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 Well, now oh, one more. Qu uh, my many questions, because you know, I'm doing this because I think this is a great opportunity for anyone. Um, us as a small business. I mean, I'm a very small business. I have somebody in the United States that works for me, and then I have two but I have a third one that works on my own websites too in the Philippines mm. and how um, I've been able to afford having a full-time graphic designer for, he's been with me like six, seven years, six years. Wow. I had a couple before that, that weren't, they flaked, you know what I mean? But he's stuck strong with me and to have a full-time graphic designer and have a VA and have somebody to help me with my websites mm is affordable like i can i would not be able to i'd have to charge exorbitant pricing as my agency if i was not paying the philippines mm -hmm. so i think it's just such an opportunity for people the one thing that i did when i started though and this is a question for you is um part-time and i still have some are part-time some are full-time do you offer part-time or is it always full-time because you have to bring them in the office and provide all that yeah, look, um, possibly. We, we certainly can look at things. Um, but again, it, it's a bit like employment. You, you generally don't find the best candidates um, that are hunting around for part-time jobs. So there is a little bit of a hurdle in terms of, you know, if you want the dedicated professionals, um, then really they start in the full-time market. Now, you know, ironically in, well, it's sort of, um, I suppose, obviously. Um, but in the Philippines, there is everything that you get in the US. So there are agencies, there are web development agencies, there are creative agencies, marketing agencies, um, content agencies. And, you know, what is so powerful about the Philippines is if you get a, a small core team in the Philippines, and then you'd say to them, look, I know you're not a web designer, but go and find one of the good agencies in uh, Manila, um, to build me a website and, you know, then you have access to effectively whatever resources you would get in downtown New York, um, but at mm -hmm. Manila prices. So it gets incredibly powerful when you just kind of know how to access these things. And so everything is out there, you know, and of course there are the online jobs.ph and the freelancer and uh, Upwork, they're all yeah. out there, but, you just, when you go into the gig economy, um, it's a little bit like, you know, going down to Central Park in New York and asking the, the dude with the long beard to do a bit of legal work for you. It's probably not going to end up so good as if you went to a sort of professionalized company um, to, to get it done. 
because there's just the, you know, there's the processes that they adhere to um, and there's just more confidence in, in the process then. Um, so, you know, anything's out makes there. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So when people, you know, if they just need a few things part-time, those would be the places to go. But then if they're ready to finally take that leap to really up their game, it would be going to use a company like yours. Yep, that makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense. Okay. But do reach out to us anyway. You know, depending on what it is, you know, we can also sure. point you in the right direction. Yeah. Good point. Yep. Very good point. Huh. Okay. So, um, oh, I had another question on my mind. Terry, do you have anything? I had another no, I, one. I, but... I, like, I just like the process. So, do you normally work with large companies for small projects? Do you work with small companies on big projects? How, how does someone know when it's actually time to outsource? Obviously, Janet's been doing it for a while and had tons mm -hmm. of success because of her great virtual assistant. But what about <laughs> other people? What, how do they know when to get into it? Why, why would I want to use somebody to, to do something? How, how do I know when it's time to say, I'm done trying to do this on my own, I should call Derek? Yeah, so, you know, if you're in a small business and you're a solopreneur or you're starting off and you're wondering when to start, I, I think it's all of our ambitions to really grow and scale a company. If you're kind of just working by yourself, then you're effectively in a job but you're the boss and the employee, you know, you, you really sort of hit a sweet spot of a business when you start to scale the business, when you start to build in processes, when you bring people on board to execute those processes. And then eventually you can re remove yourself from being sort of a critical cog in the wheel of the, of the function of your operations. Um, so this is all a process again, which is natural within business. And then, whether you're employing someone stateside or you're outsourcing, they're really the same. And it's going through that maturation of a, of a sort of company growth where you start to say, look, this is too much work for me. I can bring someone on board. Then once you sort of hit that stage, you start to map the processes. You start sort of uh, thinking about the processes, who you can delegate this work to, the, the, the sort of skills that they would need, you know, and then that's really the beginning of building a business. Now, the, the nice thing about outsourcing is that there is a 70% discount. So, you know, the lumps are smaller, you know, the hiring people is very lumpy. It's very expensive. It's kind of scary. Um, and also if it goes wrong, it's very expensive exercise. Whereas outsourcing minimizes that exposure, that risk, um, and it also means that, you know, if you're a sort of slightly more mature business with a few employees already, it means that you can bring on one or two or three people without so much exposure and risk. You can test a few new ideas, a few new business models, a few new activities um, without the sort of exposure. So, um, yeah, it's really good opportunity at any stage of the business. Absolutely. I love what you said at the beginning. It's like, you know, we as a solopreneur, you're just trading your hours for dollars, mm. you know, when you can finally. So how I think of things is like, should I be doing this task? That's kind of how I look yeah. at things. Like, yeah, yeah, should yeah. this be something I focus my time on? So for instance, the podcast, we record, we do the podcast, but then, you know, all the fulfillment, I felt I've learned everything that I do. And then I do videos and train and show mm what to do but i know if it's something that we do again and again and again and again why not train somebody else to do that yeah yeah absolutely and i picture it you know there's an analogy of the rocket ship trying to get out of the the ozone or the atmosphere and it's really really hard there's a lot of friction there's a lot of stuff pushing it back down to earth um and that is that's a small business getting going you know that it, it's really hard to pass those stages um, but then as you do and you get a bit of scale and you write down the processes and you have a bit of momentum behind you, then it, it kind of gets easier as you go into, into space. Um, but also, you know, it, um, outsourcing staffing isn't just about getting the administrative work done. Um, there's a lot of lead generation. There's a lot of sales opportunities. Um, there's a lot of proactive things that can actually um, you know, contribute towards building your revenues, which should help you get to those next stages faster. Expand on that a little bit. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this is where I really challenge people to think. Uh, a lot of people that 
start considering outsourcing and kind of racking their brains to think of what can I possibly outsource? But I actually try and flip that around and say, you know, actually just assume that every job in your company can be outsourced. Um, and I will, I will, and then there will be maybe uh, somewhere, you know, 10% of those roles that should really stay at home. You know, if you're a plumber, you, you kind of need to be there to fix <laughs> yeah. the toilet. But every other role within a plumber's business can be done remotely. You know, and as we go, you know, we're talking now on Zoom, um, everything is done in front of a computer. And you would find that generally 95% of jobs um, in any sector really can be done remotely. You know, that means in front of a computer. Um, and then it doesn't matter if you are sitting in an office, you're working remotely from home or you're in another country altogether. Um, so you're really only limited by your imagination. We have clients that are, uh, um, you know, sitting in Manila, they are trained naval sea captains and they are uh, steering oil tankers around the ocean. Um, we have people that are looking at analytics from satellites, from Danish uh, mobile phone satellites, and they are tweaking the satellites in space somehow um, for mobile, for optimizing mobile phone coverage. Um, you know, we have doctors and nurses consulting from the Philippines uh, into the US. You know, you're just really limited by your imagination now. It's incredible what you can do wow. over an internet connection. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Huh. Well, this yeah. is good. I mean, I think there's a lot of people that could use this. It's just like, I think what you said is, I think people really need to think hard about how they could use it, you know, and how, and I think having a call with you or something like that to kind of just work through things sounds like you kind of coach and consult a little bit on this too, so that you can work through what the needs are. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're, we're happy to have a chat to people and just kind of explore it. Uh, Cause it is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit scary for people. It's a little bit new, you know, you're sort of dealing with a country that is off the radar a little bit. So, you know, we, we can um, yeah, happily have a chat to people and help them explore it. And then you have a podcast too, correct? I saw something on your website. We do, uh -huh. we do indeed. It, uh, it's um, called the Outsource Accelerator Podcast. I probably could have put a little bit more thought into the creativity of that. But uh, yeah, we've, we've That's what it is. <laughs> probably the best name ever. Good it branding is, yeah. for you and the company. I like it. Yeah. What it says on the on the label, but uh, yeah, so we've got about two hundred and fifty podcasts now. So uh, you know, I do my best interviewing uh, BPO, which is outsourcing owners um, or senior management or you know senior figures in the industry, and also some clients and people that have outsourced before, business owners and things. Um, so yeah, across the two hundred and fifty episodes, hopefully it gives people a really good insight into. Uh, the opportunities in outsourcing. Yeah. That's great. And they can just find that on your website or where do they find, where do the listeners find that? Yeah, that's on the website or, you know, anywhere like iTunes or Spotify or, you know, anywhere that you listen to your podcast, it's the Outsource Accelerator podcast. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. And then where's the best, I'm sure your website, but go ahead and give your website again so that, and then how the best place to reach you and connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. So it is outsourceaccelerator.com. Uh, I almost forgot that there. And uh, people can reach out to me direct, and that is Derek at outsourceaccelerator.com. And my name is spelled D E R E K. E K. Okay, got it. Got it. And then we have to end with what's Ooh. your favorite 80s song? And we have two things to end with, actually. What's your favorite 80s song? We did throw that in at the beginning, so we have to yeah. mention it. <laughs> For sure. I, lucky you forewarned me, actually, and I wrote this down because otherwise, I'm, and I don't even know if it's 80s, but David Bowie from Labyrinth, when I was a kid, I was really into him. Um, so I don't even know the song, but the Labyrinth song. <laughs> no. Do you know, Terry? Um, I, I remember I Labyrinth, and okay. I think it was, I think it's close enough. I think, I think Labyrinth came out in between 79 and 81. So ah, I, we're going to, yeah. we're going to give him we're going to give him full credit for it. Full and credit for it. <laughs> and because it was Bowie, it's, oh, shoot, it's 1986. 100%. 100%. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
Total 80s song. Oh, that's yeah, great. So Timeless. Totally, totally fits. I don't know which song we're talking about still, but that's okay. That's great. He was, yeah, he was a different character, but yeah, an icon. But <laughs> Bowie, dude, Bowie was one of the best. Uh, and then Derek, what, uh, what, if you, if our audience is listening and going, this is intriguing them, what would be a great action step for them to take next if they want to move forward with something? Yeah, look, um, I just, if people are in business, you have to look into outsourcing. You don't necessarily have to do it, but you know, you really owe it to yourself because the world is globalizing. The world is changing really quickly and you've got to stay competitive and got to take advantage of these opportunities. Um, so, you know, check us out, check out outsourcing generally and just see whether it's right for you and your business. Um, on our website, we also offer three free quotes. Um, so just go to our website and, you know, plug in a little bit of information or just uh, contact us and we can give you very accurate um, insight into uh, costs for your business. That's great. Very good. Very good. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm glad we did this uh, call and it will be, well, because we are call caught up, you're going to be pretty quickly, probably in about two weeks, <laughs> that Fantastic. this will go live. Awesome. Any it. last uh, thing, Terry? No, I, I, I feel like I learned a lot and, uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking about what are the tasks that I do that I do all the stinking time that take up too much time that I shouldn't be doing. So, um, and I think that's probably the way most of us should think about it. I think the two of you really cued that up nicely. So, you know, hopefully Derek, you, you get a couple of calls as a result, right? Some of, uh, some of Ernie reaches out and says, hello. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's delegate. Let's delegate this stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Well, and then you can find all of our past podcast episodes at businessgrowthtime.com slash blog or slash podcast, either one. And then we also have a Facebook group, businessgrowthtime.xyz, and you can, it takes right to the Facebook group. So thanks again, Derek, and we will chat with you guys soon. Have a good one.